how can you be fake and get real engagement? That's the best way to think about this tip and something that every one of us can do, but everybody is not brave enough to do it. You put mistakes in the videos so you can get comments. I mean, it's like a social engineering, the comment section. Right. So it's like the most popular one was I did like a Tic Tac organizer. Okay. So it's like you, so that the Tic Tacs don't shake. You could do 16 on one side and 16 on the other that fit back into the uh, Tic Tac box. And I said, so there's 16 on this side, 16 on this side. That makes 36 Tic Tacs. That video has... 20,000 comments of the people telling me it's 32, not 36. That, that's why they have the evil in your evil genius. Right, exactly. Right? Okay. <laughs> Beautiful. Very simple. Very simple. This is why I said a lot of people won't do it, though. Why? Because of the judgment aspect of it. Yeah, nobody wants to look stupid. Nobody wants to look stupid. a bunch stupid. of strangers on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> But no, but I was like real life SpongeBob. Yeah, you know, it's a stranger. But no, it's real. Like I like uh, social engineering things like this, where like you can play off of negative parts of people, right? Mm -hmm. Like, hey, I know that people, especially on TikTok, especially on the internet, just cannot resist the urge to correct a random person they've never <laughs> met in their life about the smallest thing that they, you know, we all are human, you know, like, hey, there's a good chance this person was just moving fast and forgot, but I need to tell them exactly. that that in and the single is too far apart from what it's supposed to be. Right. They, they, it was a hundred word post and they misspelled one word and somehow she turned to an essay. It turns to, hey, exactly. I got to respond and, and, and feel like, yeah, they got all those other words right, but you know, this dumbass forgot this. <laughs> This one part. Everything else is great, but it's one part right here. Why is that beautiful? How can artists apply it? So I think one just a paying paying attention to like what triggers your audience. Not even not even always your audience. Just let's say people at the at the surface level, and then your audience as you are, as you build and are able to get more specific. I, I was gonna say because the best people to trigger are the people that don't know you. I wasn't gonna say that. Your audience is villain. Boy, what you mean? There's some audiences that have an innate villain. Okay, yeah. Okay, right? Yeah, yeah. In public. There's a, like, oh, this is my social agenda. And then there's some people who are against that social yeah, agenda. Yeah. So I'm going to anger the people who are against it to make the people who are for it stand stronger. Yeah. Uprise. Be be like, oh, man, see, there goes those, there those people go again. It's like the Beyonce example. I always use Super Bowl. All right, you remember her Bruno Mars, love that performance, and you know, good job Coldplay for inviting him out. <laughs> that that performance, I watched it. And I said, "Oh my gosh, this is amazing! That was great. I really felt refreshed. I was happy. People I knew that were happy enjoyed that performance, and then that was the end of it. Good stuff. You remember that? I do remember that. Did you like that performance? It was cool. All right." You know, you got some work on your judgment to do. It was amazing. <laughs> now, what happened after that? You remember what happened after that? Uh, somebody fucked up. Did somebody fuck up? Beyonce fucked up in the performance. She fell a little bit, and that kind of became a thing. And she recovered, and the recovery Wait, became a mark. Was her Black Panther performance? That's what it yeah, was. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Look. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even think about it and notice it, because I'm just black. Sometimes, man, bro... You can see Black Panther stuff and not and not even be Black Panther because that's just how ingrained it is. You know what I mean? Like it's just yeah. there and not always just to shout that out. But yes, people were angry because she was repping the Black Panthers, and that was when I first truly started to understand how some people view the Black Panthers in this extremist way, mm -hmm. right? And allowed the government to manipulate their opinion of the Black Panthers, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, like all groups, maybe there's some people that whatever, whatever, but no, like we know by and large, the black community generally doesn't look at it that way, right? So you see all this uproar. The community that understands and sees the Black Panthers in a more positive perspective would see that performance. And then there's no virality or emotion that came from it. From the Black Panther aspect of it, right? Mm. It just is what it is. Oh, yeah, cool, whatever. Keep moving. But then the people who are angered by that, the villain of that community in that particular issue, they got angry. And then 
when the community that supports or views them more positively learned of the people getting angry and spewing their comments and the hate and da da da. That's when you create the friction. That's when you create the virality, the polarity, and things take off to another level. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's how it works. You can't just introduce a message to an audience that agrees with it when you're working in those type of landscapes. It's best, if we're talking about virality, social engineering, to introduce it to the crowd that hates it and then tell the crowd that loves it how the crowd that hates it is acting. That's true. That's true. It's it's a whole yeah. game you have to play. Yeah. So it should just be falling on deaf ears. It's like, oh yeah, good job. That's dope. Because you gave it to the people that love it. And yeah. now you're mad. They just kept moving. Yeah, I don't think people realize that virality typically comes from people that don't agree with the thing that you did. Like he even even he spoke on the video, hey, it went viral because people were correcting me on my thing. His audience probably didn't care. They probably was like, oh, he made a mistake in the thing and kept the pushing. But it's probably random people on the for you page. Oh, this stupid motherfucker. Yep. Misspelled this word, yep. dumbass. You know what I'm saying? So let me take a quick second to say if you're an artist trying to blow your music up, or if you're a manager, a music professional in general trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you, and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. And man, like I know artists, content creators in general, typically dislike those type of people, right? Like those are the people that give most credit on artists like anxiety about posting, makes them scared to check their DMs. They dislike which type of people? Like the trolley people that Oh, Coming yeah, stuff like that. For sure. But what they fail to realize is that those are some of the easiest people to trigger, bro. You want a viral moment? Find that group of people and fuck with them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Do something to piss them off. Respond to their comment in a certain way. Watch how they hit you back with eight more that boost your engagement <laughs> on your video. You know what I'm saying? Like, and so like I, I think like this is a great example because I mean he's just going off of something as simple as like, you know, a, a clerical error, like I made a mistake. But I do think you can be intentional in your viral campaigns about like what emotion do I want to trigger in people and then work it backwards from there, right? So I don't remember what, what article I got this from. But this was this was something like super early in like our influencer marketing strategy building where I remember reading this thing that was like, if you want something to go viral, the easiest emotions to trigger are laughter, um, anger, sadness, and there was one other thing. I can't remember what the fourth thing was, but it was like these four emotions. Like you can like trigger something in one of these buckets, like to an extreme degree, that shit is probably going viral. You know what I'm saying? So now I even think about it with our influencer campaigns or just viral campaigns in general. It's like, all right, what is the what is the top of line emotion that we're trying to hit? Right? Mm -hmm. We're trying to piss people off. We're trying to make them sad. We're trying to make them laugh. We're trying to make them feel like romantic and lovely. Mm -hmm. And then you work it backwards from now. Okay, what's the core idea? And then how am I going to communicate the idea? And then what are some of my little dressings I can add on top to like really set it off? You know what I'm yep. saying? Make it look super organic. So, yeah, I think the thing I want people to take away from that is like, you know, yeah, like it sounds messed up to say, but like figure out what triggers the group of people you're trying to get in front of. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Um, and yeah, so if they're your audience, then maybe you walk that line pretty tightly. But if they're not your audience, hey, man, it's all, all is fair in love and war, bro. You know? <laughs> All is fair when you're building the fan base, man. Hey, man. Look, <laughs> look, the thing is, you don't also you don't also don't have to do it in that way, where you're making a clerical error, a mistake. Yeah, right. You can also do it in a way where it's less of a mistake. It's just I don't even know what to call it, intrigue or some or something. So here's an example to better display what I'm talking about. Let's say I'm rapping and I'm on the street. I'm rapping. All right. Better yeah, I'm singing. I like that better. I'm singing on the street. I'm killing it. All right. And then in the video, there's this monkey that does a backflip. Yeah. I'm not acknowledging it. I'm singing. 
and everything. And maybe I don't actually know when I'm recording a video, but then when you post that video, what's going to happen? Is anybody going to say anything about the monkey doing a backflip in the back? I see that monkey. All right. And she's killing at the same time. It becomes these extra things, like these Easter eggs for people to talk about and create conversation. So it all comes down to creating conversation at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, the social engineering aspect just comes from, you know, creating a, a, uh, what, an environment intentionally to encourage that conversation, you know, no matter where it comes from. Yeah, that, there was this one artist I follow on TikTok, this rapper named Akintoye. And I remember his early viral videos, he used to wear like a, I think actually, I still think he wears like a bonnet. In his videos while he's freestyling. Really? Yeah. He does? So, like, he, he wears the bunny while he freestyles. Like, it was one day where I scrolled through his page and saw the point where he first started doing it. And then the initial comments was like, oh, you know, you look, you know, insert slur here. You know what I'm saying? Take that bunny off all, like, real rappers on, blah, blah. <laughs> and I feel like there was a point where, like, he looked at that shit and was like, oh, this particular group of rap connoisseurs, as we should call them, are triggered by this satin fabric on my head <laughs> and it's raking in the views it's causing people to defend me right it's overall boosting my profile and then if you go look at his page he's always rapping in the bonnet you know what I'm saying? i think he's been doing it i don't know if he stopped because i haven't super looked at his content recently but i mean he rode that train for like a good like year and some change you know what i'm saying Why not? and so like that's he comes from what i feel like is a model of me man if i find something that is triggering a group of people I'm riding that wave forever. Great, great example, 6 ix 9 6 9 rode that trigger wave for the outside audience until the, until the goddamn feds got him, bro. If the feds had never stopped him, who knows what type of menace he would have still been today. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro. And that's how I feel, bro. Ride that shit. To the feds get you. To the feds get you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Not the wheels fall off. To the feds get you. Hey, that's a new way, bro. We- <laughs> <laughs> oh man well hey i think that's the perfect way 